Assuming everything goes according to plan, tomorrow we'll see the launch of Skybound's Transformers Issue 1. After several months of build-up, we're finally here. The dawn of a brand new Transformers comic book franchise. But before we get there, and before we talk a little bit about what I'm hoping from Skybound, I want to talk a little bit about the history of Transformers comic books and how we got to this point. Because, I don't know, there's a weird sense in the air for me that lightning is about to strike twice. Now, if you're fortunate enough to not have the grey hair that I do, or you're perhaps not as familiar with comic book history, let me take you on a little history lesson of what comics were like in the early 90s. They were huge. How huge? Well, X-Men number one ended up selling 8 million copies. Now, just to be clear, that was definitely an outlier. Most comic books at that time would not even come close to that. But series like The Death of Superman, Nightfall, these things were events covered on mainstream news. But the focus wasn't entirely on just the big event books. Heck, in order to get your comic book into the top 100, it would need to sell around 100,000 copies. Today, 100,000 copies would likely get you into the top two or three books of the month. And it's in that environment that Pat Lee enters the story. Now look, I know we're talking about Skybound and I've started off by talking about Dreamwave, but I said there's a sense of lightning striking twice and this is what I mean by that. You see, Pat Lee got his start at a little company called Image Comics. Now, who's Image? Well, again, in the early 90s, a bunch of Marvel and DC artists and writers decided to up sticks and form their own company, headed by a guy you might be familiar with, Todd McFarlane. Now, Todd McFarlane would help found Image along with a bunch of others, and they would go on to produce comics such as Spawn, Saga, Kick-Ass, oh, and a little indie comic book called The Walking Dead. But more on that in a minute. So Pat Lee, in the early 90s, ends up working at Image Comics. And while there, him and his brother Roger create a imprint. And the name of that imprint is Dreamwave. That's right, Dreamwave started as an imprint. And it would remain as part of an imprint up until 2002. Now, I can't for the life of me think why in 2002 Pat and Roger would decide to pull away from Image. Oh, that's right, because they got the Transformers license. But as Pat and Roger were leaving Image, another person was joining it. In 2002, a young up-and-coming writer called Robert Kirkman joined Image Comics. And a year later, he would find success with his first series, Invincible. It's interesting to note that one of his first gigs as part of Image in 2002 was on Masters of the Universe. No, seriously. He wrote a few issues of a series called Icons of Evil, which spotlighted some of the origins of He-Man's greatest villains. It's actually a really good series, and I would highly recommend trying to check it out if you can find them. Anyway, Invincible is a massive success, and he follows this up with The Walking Dead, and the rest is history. Towards the end of the decade, Kirkman would be approached by Todd McFarlane to become a partner at Image Comics. To give you an idea of how big this is, in the 30 plus years of Image, only one person has ever been asked to become a partner, and that's Kirkman. So much like Pat Lee before him, Kirkman sets up his own imprint within Image Comics, Skybound Entertainment. So the first thing that I really want to talk about with my hopes for Skybound is really that there's a clear, solid vision for this book. And what do I mean by that? Well, Western comics have an issue that generally manga doesn't, and it's probably one of the reasons why manga is selling so well at the moment compared to Western comics, apart from the value for money which manga beats comic books hands down. But consider this, a manga is usually the vision of one individual from beginning to end, where with Western comics, Superman, Batman, Transformers, we get a lot of turnover of creative teams. And generally when a new creative team comes on, they want to take the book in a 
bold new direction. And I think we saw that definitely through the IDW era. I hope that this book, through a clear direction from editorial, is able to maintain its momentum and keep itself going through creative changes. Now, Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer, you know, Daniel is a uh, Eisner Award winning writer. He is not going to be on the book forever. So whoever takes over, I hope that they're planning to build on the work that he has done rather than discarding it and moving on with their own ideas because that's really where the books are going to be hurt. The other thing with this book is that it needs to be a book for everybody. IDW did a great job of introducing new fans into the franchise and you can meet these people at conventions and talk to them and they will say that the reason that they are a fan of Transformers is because of IDW's comic books. So with that knowledge, Skybound needs to attract a new audience. I would love to be able to meet somebody who can say to me that Skybound was the reason that they got into Transformers. But here's where the balancing act comes in. Not only do you need to introduce new fans, you need to maintain the ones that you've currently got. And again, this goes back to a clear vision, but it also needs to be a book for all ages. While you might love More Than Meets the Eye, it's not a book that you can comfortably hand to a child and expect them to have a good time with. It's deep with lore and character that will often go over a child's head. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to dumb the story down, not by any means, but I want it to be a book that you can hand to a child and for them to have a fun time with. It's hard enough to get kids off their iPads for anything, especially reading a comic book, but this is the challenge that I think Skybound has to overcome if this book is going to be successful. Now, let's talk about the biggie. Let's talk about what I want from Skybound. The thing, the most important thing, if you will. You might think this is a little far-fetched, but go with me on this one. Skybound Entertainment, unlike IDW and unlike Dreamwave, is not a comic book publisher. They are a multimedia company. That means that they delve into video games, delve into comic books, and of course, Walking Dead and Invincible are already two fantastic shows on the small screen. So what if Skybound were able to get the full Transformers license? Could you imagine it? Now, take for example, Void Rivals issue 3. One of the quintessons mentioned the Age of Wrath, a nice little Dreamwave reference, and I promise that will probably be the last time in this video I mentioned Dreamwave. But consider this. What if we got to see the Age of Wrath, but not in a comic book? What if as part of the same universe, we got to see a animated movie? Or alternatively, we got to play in the Age of Wrath in the latest PS5 exclusive? When IDW got the license for Transformers, the MCU was still several years away. The idea of this interconnected shared universe is something that Hasbro has been chasing for years, and in my mind, it's always failed. The Aligned Continuity was their best shot at it, and it was a disaster. I'm sorry, no matter how much squinting you do, this guy and this guy are not the same. But Skybound has a unique opportunity. If they could get all of the license together in one spot with one clear director vision, well, it would solve the aligned issues and it would put Transformers on the map as a giant, all-encompassing brand. Now, there are pitfalls with this. Having all your eggs in one basket is dangerous. But I think Skybound's the right people to do it. So what do you think? Those are a few ideas that I've got and hopes that I have for Skybound. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, I'm shooting it in a different format just because I need to get this video out on time. But I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope also that you'll consider supporting Skybound. Now, I'm not being sponsored or anything like that, and I'm certainly not getting any money for it, but there is a link down below to Comixology where you can purchase issue one if you don't have access to a local comic book shop. I would always say, however, that if you do have the option to go and pick up that physical book, go ahead and do it. Uh, like I say, links down below, please go check it out. And if this is your first time hearing about it, or alternatively, you weren't sure whether you were going to pick it up, let me know if I've persuaded you. 
Now I am going to stand on my soapbox just a little bit before I wrap this up and just say, please, if you are considering reading Transformers issue one, please buy the comic, whether you do it digitally or whether you buy it physically in store, especially in store to help out comic book shops, please don't steal your comic books. Thank you all so, so much for your support. Let me know down below, what's your favorite era of comics? Is it IDW? Is it Dreamwave? Is it Marvel? Heck, is it Dark Horse, for example? I hope you all have a great time. Thank you all so, so very much for joining me today. Take care of each other. This is David saying, bye for now.